welcome back. I really hope that these lessons are helpful for you advancing as a bassoonist and that you're encouraged and you're working hard and enjoying playing the bassoon. You know, I enjoy playing the bassoon and I want you to enjoy that as well. You know, sometimes I get frustrated playing the bassoon and I've explored a whole bunch of blind, blind alleys and, and difficulties on the instrument that I, I hope you can avoid. And that's why right now I'm trying to give you some of these tips so that you can just, you can avoid some of the difficulties I've had and progress quickly through playing bassoon and enjoying what you're doing. Uh, so in this portion right now, we're going to discuss some of the more difficult fingerings on the bassoon, particularly the ones that, that come to the, the young bassoonist, the beginning bassoonist, and I'm hoping that these will help you. I want to first start with C sharp 3 or D flat 3. This is a rather complicated fingering and I'm going to come up to the camera and show you what happens with the thumb. First for this finger you have the front three fingers down but the back becomes quite complex. You need to have down the whisper key and this key, the C sharp key, and this key, the D key. So you have to learn to turn your thumb like that. We don't want the whisper to come up for you to lift up, put down these fingers, and then come back, but instead to, to turn like this. Well, that is quite complicated, and it will take you quite a while to master that particular fingering and the technique to slowly and, and well, I guess accurately move your thumb there. Uh, there's a piece that I play that has a lot of that in there, and you may have heard my performance of Flight of the Bumblebee before. The opening of it starts with some of that uh, over that uh, D sharp or, or D flat. Right in there. Right there is from the D to the C sharp. It's not possible to, at, at that speed to pick up my thumb, put it down, pick it up, put it down again before and after I play that particular note. So you, you just don't have a choice. So learning the proper technique, developing those skills from the beginning is really going to help you. Now the other difficult fingering on the bassoon is the forked fingering with the E flat. This involves one and three down. Notice two is up. That's why they call it forked, is there is a, a space in between these two. Most of the other woodwind instruments, the flute, the clarinet, even saxophone, others, all avoid uh, fork fingerings. The bassoon, however, still has many fork fingerings, and attempts to get rid of it have been so clumsy that I guess the bassoonist had chosen to continue with the fork fingerings. Now, the left hand E flat, or D sharp, E flat 3, has one 3 down, and then again the whisper key. This is, however, a bit unstable on our instrument. Now I can place that pitch all over the place and sometimes it's not very stable. So I add fingers in the right hand. Some people add the thumb B flat and the, um, the first finger in the right hand. I, however, like the second finger added. Gives me a little bit more resonant sound. I tend to choose fingerings that are more resonant because the bassoon often doesn't project well. So that is my choice. I realize this is a very clumsy fingering. But if you learn it and start mastering it at a young age, you can use it very quickly. When I have very speedy notes, as I just did in the Flight of the Bumblebee, the opening I played for you, then I only use the left hand E flat. However, when I'm, when I'm doing things slowly, 
then I do add these other two fingerings in the right hand. Well, you've progressed far enough now that you're ready to start notes above open F, what we sort of may call the break on, on the bassoon. And these notes, F sharp 3, G3, A flat 3, all have to use what we call the half hole. And the half hole happens with the first finger, left hand, index. And it's, the half hole motion is not made by sliding the finger, rather it's made by rolling the finger. You can find the proper position of this hole on this finger by pressing down your, your finger very forcefully and then taking a look at the hole where it appears on your finger. The, it should appear on the upper portion of your finger. It should not appear right in the middle, but again the upper portion. Let me do that again. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. By having it on the upper portion, you can then roll the finger back and forth in order to make very smooth uh, motions. That's me going from an A natural to a G sharp. A natural doesn't need the half hole, um, but the G sharp does. The G natural needs it. To play my G natural in tune, I add this little finger key. It makes a big difference. It lowers the pitch. Here's without it. It lowers the pitch and gives a little more resonance to the note. So I encourage you to do that as well. And then F sharp. Now, you will notice by just changing the position of this hole, you can also alter the intonation a little bit. I have another, uh, another video that talks about fingering technique, which goes into the tuning of those notes a little bit. But uh, let's not worry about that. Let's, let's just, just try to get the half holes out, and you'll learn from experience how much to vent that particular hole. Well, those are some of the difficult uh, fingerings on the bassoon that you're going to need to master at this time. Take your time on them, learn those fingerings very carefully, and you'll be well rewarded by the time you put in. <laughs>